Welcome to Optimal Frequency. I'm Grant. I talk to spirits on this channel. I'm not going to give you the whole spiel as usual. You know what I do here if you watch this channel. Last week, had a very interesting session. We were doing a conversation with Dr. Ian Stevenson, the man that researched a lot on reincarnation. And the children that came back sometimes could remember being a different person in a different life. They died traumatically. And then in their new life, they had birthmarks that cor uh, corresponded with the way they died. So when I asked about uh, birthmark that I used to have on this side of my face uh, they told me I was shot and murdered because my ear problems have something to do with something that happened to me in a previous life just like your research Dr. Stevenson so that being what it is that opened up a whole can of worms got me looking into this murder case that i vaguely remember my grandfather telling me about he told me about it 20 years ago but this happened in 1969 this is one of canada's greatest escapes stay tuned for the escape from the North Bay, Ontario Jail by Don Kelly, 1975. Woo, this is going to be a ride. How to really find out the real, you know, would be kind of tricky because most people probably that were involved with that stuff and with them would not want to talk about it. And anybody I figure that would is pretty much dead now. Exactly. That's where I come in. I can get the truth from the dead people. Hello. Hello. It's me again. Do you, do you got five minutes? Yeah. Okay, so you were right. I'm right about which. Okay, so I looked into the story and I found some really amazing stuff, some really amazing photos. Okay, black and white photos of that time. Uh huh. The guy's mother, like you were saying. Okay, yeah. I found actual police footage of them with their rifles out, shells on the top of the car. They're going on this manhunt. They drive right down Trout Lake. You can see the lake there. It's awesome. Uh, like I say, I can remember us getting stopped maybe probably by the portage. Yeah. And then, you know, when they were checking trunks, there was lined up some both ways. Okay, well, that's what I want to say. You were right about the time frame, okay? Be okay. Because the two murders took place in 1969. Now. Okay, I said it probably was 68, maybe. But, well, here's the thing. I don't know, because I don't know the details of what day you were stopped and whether you were stopped during the manhunt or not. But No, we, that was when they found bodies there or something. Okay, well, that was 69. It was back, farther back, and they were stopping us coming out. But, remember I said Gerwin was taking us to the drive-in? 
Yeah. And we got stopped going into the drive-in, and I did seem older then, you know what I mean? So, it, yeah, that makes sense. So what my aunt was telling me, because it was hard for me to understand, and it was hard for her to actually remember because nobody had broached the subject with her for so many years, right? What happened was in 1969, she was a little girl, uh, you know, six or eight, like she said, and she was traveling back this road, a dirt road that a lot of my family lives on. It's called the North River Road, which is the North River the bodies were dumped in. She was traveling back that road with my grandfather, and uh, they were stopped by the police that day when the bodies were found. So that was 1969. Now, fast forward to 1975, and uh, this is when the guy who's finally been caught and put in jail, he's going through the process of being prosecuted for the murders. Okay, so this is like six years after the fact, right? In 1975, that's the day he decides, nah, -uh, I ain't staying in jail. He tackles a guard, grabs a rifle, and escapes. Just so happens my aunt is traveling out the highway again that day. They were stopped by the police again that day, and they were uh, searched again or maybe told, watch out, there's a guy on the loose, right? So she was stopped twice, six years apart. That was sort of the confusing part for me, but it makes sense when you look back now, and it's amazing that she remembers this. Yeah. 69 would make sense because I even thought about it after I talked to you. I was just a little kid. I wasn't no 12 or 13. Yeah, 69. Because I remember looking and didn't quite know what was going on. And I used to go to the with Dad to the bush when I was younger. So you were stopped when they found the bodies in 69. Well, yeah, they we must have taken... on the North River Road, back farther on the North River Road. You just happened to be out with Grandpa that day. That's funny. What were they looking for that day? Somebody with a gun? No, just if we had seen anybody back where we were. I do remember them asking Dad that. And Dad goes, oh, no, no, we were way back there. Didn't see anybody. Yeah. Like, I don't know if they meant, like, vehicles, too, on the road. Because that's Mulock, I think, we were in that day. Okay, and I figured out something else since I talked to you last as well. Remember I said the, the road, I couldn't think of the name? Whittafield Station Road. Say it again? Whittafield Station Road. Oh, Whittafield Station Road, okay. Well, that's where the murder, well, that's where the bodies were dumped. Well, okay. Where the river crosses at the power line over on that side. Okay, so I'm just getting the cameras set up here. And one thing to note, so on the TV behind me. Now, for those of you that have watched the channel for a while, and I'm trying to make this communication more clear we go back to the very first time i ran the echo chamber down here there's one thing i did that day that i have not been doing since then okay so i'm running the sound through my surround sound system down here i got the speakers front right and center there and i got two little side ones on the walls here but what i did that day was i also put the tv speakers on to 50 if you remember i have not done that since and that echo chamber was very, very clear when we first did that first video. So today I've added the TV speakers are back on to 50 as well as the whole surround sound system. The kettle fountain and the sugar bowl are upstairs ready to go. I've got two full pages of questions. This is a session that I'm doing at the sink because Gary and I are going to head to the bush with the kettle fountain to the spot where the bodies were dumped into the river. We're going to do a session there. But as we know, the kettle fountain out in the field is not as clear as using this setup at the house. So I want to do lots of questions here at the house to make sure I get some good solid answers here. And then we'll head out to the bush and do a separate session later on this week. So this is going to be fantastic. Here we go. Thank you. 
Good morning, spirits. I did my prayer earlier downstairs. I spoke to you and I said, you know, it's long lines of my first question here, which I said, if Don Kelly wants to come through and it is safe for me to talk with him, then he can come through and answer these questions if he wants to. Okay? Is there anything you want to say before we get started? Yeah, I'm getting the shivers across the back already. Good sign. Uh, all I remember was not so much. I remember being stopped that day because it was out of the ordinary. Like it doesn't happen. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And so, like you say, I don't even think Dad got out of the car. I think he just rolled down the truck window. I think, if I remember right, it didn't really mean no. Never mind, really, to me. Like, yeah. And because sometimes if you did see somebody like Dad would stop if there was what he called those like uh, conservation officers and they would talk to Dad or whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. But this was police. Right. And, yeah, just basically like, you know, asking Dad what he was doing or, and he was like, oh, getting wood or what, well, I'm sure it was wood we had in the back. That's the only reason we used to go back there, you know what I mean? Donald Kelly, who was serving a life sentence for robbery, kidnapping, forcible confinement, and murder, was the subject of a month-long manhunt beginning August 2, 1975, when he overpowered a guard in the visitor's room at the North Bay Jail and escaped. Kelly's escape is a story that people remember about the North Bay Jail. The incident and subsequent search ended in a shootout with police and garnered global attention at the time. Kelly had been in jail while a preliminary hearing was being held for three people, including himself, for the 1969 murder of Carol Ann McWilliams and her brother-in-law, Jack McWilliams, both of North Bay. After overpowering the guard, he escaped out a back door through which the groceries were being delivered, stealing a rifle and ammunition from a truck in the parking lot before hijacking a vehicle on Trout Lake Road. Kelly ran wild through the area during his month on the lam, gaining an almost folk hero status. Kelly stole vehicles, hidden cottages, and took multiple hostages before police tracked him to a cabin in Skeed, about 30 kilometers northeast of downtown Sudbury. An Ontario Provincial Police tracking dog was killed during the gun battle before a wounded Kelly was apprehended. Kelly died behind bars in British Columbia in 2009 at the age of 71. All right, Mr. Kelly. Did you go to what we would call heaven? When you crossed over, who was there to greet you? <laughs> Are you happy with the life that you lived as a criminal? Was there anything you were ashamed about from that life that you lived as Don Kelly? I'm a local to this area, born and raised here. This is my home, right in the area that you grew up in. Um, what do you think of the of Red Ridge and the community community that we have here now? 
Did you ever go fishing in the North River? What kind of fish are in that river? Have you seen your mother since she died? All right, folks, so that's the end of part one. Now, we got some pretty interesting answers in there. I want to say that I went to the sink with my 27 questions this time, and I hammered this out in under 10 minutes. I left three or four seconds each time at the end. I literally boop, 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 went through those questions because I want to get through it fast without having to spend hours looking and as you just heard in this session the answers were on topic and pretty clear even though i only left them the briefest amount of time to answer it's awesome okay so um join us next time for part two because there's a, there was some controversies about this case this donald kelly claimed that yes he was there when the people were murdered okay but that he never pulled the trigger okay so he never did admit to it the other two guys that were there pointed the finger at him. So there's a controversy around that. I asked him in the session, point blank, did you do it? Who pulled the trigger? I haven't analyzed it yet. I don't know the answers. And then there's a really sad part coming up about a police dog. I do a whole section here coming up that you're going to see. It's quite sad on the police dog that was killed in this unfortunate incident. It's, it's disgusting, really. Now, he claimed he did not shoot the dog. He claims that the dog was shot accidentally by an officer. So that is a huge controversy as well. Nobody knows who shot that poor animal. So I asked him again, point blank, we're going to see what the answers are to that. So join us next time for part two, the Donald Kelly escape session. <laughs>